Hi, this is Pastor Dan Kramer from Zion Christian Church in Pittsburgh. This program will give you a glimpse into the life of an amazing group of people who are seeing God do tremendous things. We trust that you're encouraged by our rich worship service and the ministry of God's Word. We'd love to have you visit with us here some Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We'd love to make you welcome, and I know the Holy Spirit would encourage you. We take time in His presence to enjoy Him. Love to have you do that with us here at Zion Christian Church. And I will rise. I'll say this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be glad in it. One thing we ask of you, one thing we desire. Hey, Lord, take your place on the throne of our hearts today. We lift you up. Arise, O oh Lord.
lift you up on our praises today. Lift up the name of the Lord today. Make him number one. Put him on the throne of your heart today. Say, God, you're my God. You're my master. You're my savior. You're my king of kings and Lord of lords. He's coming on the clouds. Kingdom, kingdoms will all bow down. He's the lion and the lamb.
So our master, our savior, our creator, you know, since God is creator, you know, he can give you wisdom and thoughts that you, you never thought about because he's creator, he's God. He's gonna give you thoughts that nobody's thought about. How precious is our God? What a great, great father we have. What a great Lord. Every day with you, Lord, is sweeter than the day before. This is a great day. Come on, Dennis, help me out. Every day.
and day before God. It's a hard song to sing, make me broken. So I can be healed. Make me empty so I can be filled. And make me lonely. So I'm only yours. Keep making me, Lord.
things happen to us and trials come along. That's when we learn a lot sometimes in that valley. Let's call on the name of the Lord. Let the weight of your glory fall on us today, God. Sing this song as a prayer before the Lord.
first song of worship is uh, another prayer. This is called Do It Again. It's a new song for us. Maybe new for some of you. Maybe some of you heard it. Well, you know, God moves mountains. Do you know that you, you know the person that moves mountains? You know someone that is a mountain mover. Our God can move mountains in your lives. It seems impassable. It's the kind of God that we serve. Our privilege as believers is to call in the great name of the Lord for our help with trouble. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. Lean not on your own understanding, but trust in God and do not be afraid. Can you grab hold of that today? Lean not on your own understanding, but trust in God and do not be afraid. Trust in Him and trust in His way. Oh God, we just look for your presence, God. Look for your touch today. Let your spirit move over us today, God. Let it move over us today, God. Let your spirit touch each one of us. You know us better than we know ourselves, Father. Great is your name. Great is your name. Holy is your name. Worthy is your name. Can you magnify the name of the Lord with me? Come on. Great is your name. Mighty is your name. Yeshua, Jesus. didn't give you his peace, so they can't take it away from you. It's God's peace. Drinking of his presence today and his peace today.
Make me lonely. Make me empty. Till I want no more than you. Till you are my one true love. Make me lonely. Make me empty. These aren't just songs, they're, they're prayers. Father, I ask you to guide my words today. Um, I believe, Lord, that over the week or so, that's, it's what you've given me. Um, I ask, Lord, that uh, I would not speak of myself, uh, that it would be your spirit, that your spirit would move in each and every person's heart and spirits here, and that they would receive what it is that you want each of them to hear, and it might be different. People sitting beside each other might receive something different. Uh, however you do it, Lord, but let it be your word that goes forth today, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I get intent with God's word, and uh, you know, if I'm saying something here with what I'm going to be talking about today, and you know, uh, I'm looking directly at you for whatever reason, I'm not really looking directly at you. Uh, you know, it's just looking around, but I mean, if you're feeling something, uh, hopefully what you're feeling is God speaking to you. Okay, so, um, you know, maybe don't shoot the messenger, uh, kind of an idea, because um, I barely know enough about myself to look introspectively and see the things I need. He needs to reveal them to me. I don't know any of you well enough to do that. Okay, so um, please understand that at the beginning. A um, little hard to read up there with Superman. <laughs> Doctor says more walking, less flying. <laughs> um, but I've got some things there of people who are working out, uh, people who are exercising, people who are um, going to the gym. Uh, I've been in Southland Shopping Center. And there are times I go to the gym. Well, I walk past it on my way somewhere else. But standing in front of the gym doesn't help me to become any more fit. Having this on a table at home doesn't help me to become any more fit. I need to exercise. I need to use it. I need to do it. So I'm going to talk a little bit here about personal growth as a believer. Okay, kind of going back a little bit with what was um, talked about, what I talked about a couple weeks ago when I had the skit guys on and we had God's chisel. And God was chiseling things away that, you know, he wants to chisel away the things that are not godly so that we can become more godly. But do we want joy or do we want happiness? There's a difference. There's a difference between joy and happiness. One is lasting and one is temporary. Which should I want? Why? And uh, how can I get it? Some of these uh, aren't showing up the full screen. I've got them all in front of me here. But um, why do we live lives that seem hard sometimes? Maybe lots of times. What are those difficulties? Why are they there? What, what, what's going on? Uh, you know, aren't we supposed to be healed? Aren't we supposed to be restored? Aren't we supposed to be the head and not the tail? <clears throat> and often the question comes to be, why God, why are you doing this to me? Or why is this happening to me? Or, you know, any myriad of thoughts like that. And, and I have to think um, to myself, oops, um, maybe I forgot to count the cost. Um, if I want to be an engineer, Maybe the cost is that I need to work hard on my math. I need to go to the right schools. I need to take the right classes. 
I need to get the right training. Is it easy? I want to be an athlete. Athletes are the easy ones to choose. Okay? I'll pick on Tom Gordon if I want to be an architect. Um, didn't just pick up a pencil one day when he was three years old and start drawing buildings. He said, oh, great, we're going to hire you now. Took a lot of work, huh, Tom? A lot of work. Even once you're in the field, it takes a lot of work. Uh, even if we want to look at the baseball players, uh, you know, we see them play the game. You know, they're playing a 7 o'clock game. We don't see them from 12 to 2.30 practicing in the field. We don't see them doing that. We only see the end result. <clears throat> Why don't you stand for a moment as I read God's word, please. If you can't stand, just stand in your heart. That would be fine. This is from James, chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. He's sending it to believers. And in the main verses that I'm working on today, verses 2, 3, and 4, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. God's Word. Uh, you know, kind of skip that one. But am I moaning and whining or am I groaning and grunting? Oh, I gotta move this table. It's a heavy table. Why do I have to do it? Ugh. There's a difference between moaning and whining and grunting and groaning because you're actually doing it. So we'll go through and we'll look at some of these words and see what they mean. Consider. It says consider all joy. Um, you know, to lead, to go before. Before it happens, consider it. Think about it. Deem it joy. Okay, think about it as being joy. Okay, think about what being is joy and what's joy. Uh, joy is gladness. It's, it's a cause or an occasion of joy. Okay, but it's something that's lasting. It's not happiness. Okay, if, um, you know, there are some small things that can make me happy. I can go to Eaton Park and I can get a super burger. Donna doesn't even have to ask me what I'm ordering when we go there. Because I'd say probably 90% of the time it's a super burger. Okay, that makes me happy. An hour or two later, I'm just not hungry anymore, that's all. Okay, that happiness is, has gone. Okay, so I have that joy, you know, um, and the joy received from something. The joy received from a person or from something that has gone on. It is a delight to the mind. It's not a feeling. Joy is something that's here. Joy is something that affects the whole being. Okay? And, um, you know, and it's from the consideration of the present or the assured approaching uh, possession of a good. Who here has joy that Jesus is coming back? I hope so. I hope so. You know, um, you know it's, it's a, a triumphant state. It's a state of overcoming, being an overcoming. Um, and, and those definitions are from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Uh, and I, that definition actually came from the online edition. But, but look what it says in Hebrews 12. It talks about Jesus who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. I can guarantee you he was not happy about going to the cross. Lord, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. He wasn't happy about going to the cross. But he had joy to do it because he knew 
what was on the other end. Okay? Knew what was on the other end. To encounter, you know, these, these uh, uh, you know, the joy when we encounter, when we fall into, when we're encompassed, when we're overwhelmed. Overwhelmed is kind of a, um, uh, a seafaring term. It's when you've got water around you, below you, and over you. You're overwhelmed. Okay, think of Jonah after he was out of the boat, but before the fish swallowed him. He was overwhelmed. I mean, there's just, you just feel helpless at times. You can feel helpless. I understand that. I know that. And, and various, there's going to be various sorts of trials that come. There's going to be all different kinds of things that come. And they're going to come from all different kinds of sources. They might come from work. They might come from your spouse. They might from, come from your kids. Uh, kids, uh, they don't come from your parents. Well, maybe they do come from your parents. Uh, uh, you know, they, they come from all sorts of places. People that you thought were friends, people that you thought were enemies, you know, all kinds of things going on. Uh, trials, you know, something breaks down that you hadn't planned on breaking down. And I, I don't know if we have the finances to take care of it. Don't know where it's going to get done. Trials, okay? And, uh, but a trial is an experiment. It's a proving. It's a testing. Gold and silver, for example, they get heated up in order to get purified. You have to put them, they have to get to the melting point, okay, before the dross, the junk that's in them, before that floats to the surface. Heard someone say one time, and I like it because it, it, it shows in our lives, okay, but it's like a, a big pot of soup. You don't know what's inside the soup until you stir it up. Once you stir it up, you can see the potatoes or the meat or the veggies or whatever. Okay? But there are things that are in me that I can, I might not even know they're there or I do know they're there and I kind of keep them hidden because I don't want any of you to see them. Okay? But something happens and I get stirred up and all of a sudden it becomes evident. It becomes made aware, and especially made aware to me. I've got to deal with that. I have to deal with what becomes evident, okay? But it tests my, my fidelity, my faithfulness, my integrity, my virtue, my constancy. Am I going to remain where I belong? Am I going to be who I say I am no matter what? Okay? And I can say that I'm going to do that. I have to get in a situation where I have to do that. By the way, the numbers that are at the top, when you see trials and you see G3985, okay, that gives you a number that if you want to check it out in Strong's Concordance, you can go look in there and get those numbers and you can look and see the definitions for yourselves. Okay, excuse me, that's why I have them there. I encourage you to do that when you're reading anyhow. Okay, whenever you're doing study of the Bible, check the words out, check them, check them there. G means it's Greek. If it's H, it means it's Hebrew. Okay, so um, be aware of that, okay? But um, I want to be constant. I don't want to be wishy-washy, okay? I want to I have integrity even when no one's watching me. I was thinking earlier during service here um, about, you know, what if I'm going through a store and I find a $10 bill on the floor? Well, if I find a $10 bill on the floor, I'm going to turn it in. Somebody lost it. What am I going to do if I find a $1 bill on the floor? I mean, somebody's going to notice they lost a $10 bill probably. Might not notice if they lost a $1 bill. But that $1 bill isn't mine. I, I've kind of gotten convicted about that this morning in here. Okay? Even thinking about the penny that I find by the cash register. My wife's real good at that. She spots money. She spots coins. Don't drop a coin. She'll spot it. But if your name's on it, she'll give it back to you. Okay. But we're in the store. We're in the grocery store. We're in line. Of course, there's various times there's coins on the floor. Um, she, and, and I do it uh, also, but I do it. I never really thought about it before, but I do it because she picks it up, 
and she puts it up on the, uh, up on the shelf there. You know, it might have been somebody's change that they dropped. It might have been something that the cashier dropped, and they needed to balance their drawer. It's not ours. It's not ours. Okay? So, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing, okay? That word knowing is, you know, that you know, but it means since or because. Because you know. Okay? Knowing that the testing, and again, the proving, the proving, going through the, it's not fun going through the test. Those people at the beginning that were at the uh, health club, uh, you know what, they, you know, to go from lifting, I'll have to talk about myself here right now. You know, if I started lifting now, I'd probably want to start with 10 pounds, 20 pounds total if I have a one bar, 10 pounds each, okay? Because if I start out with 20 pounds, I'm probably going to hurt myself right away. I'm not ready for that, okay? But I got to do that 10 pounds, and I've got to make sure that I'm doing that and that I do the right number of sets and I do them the right way. And after doing that, maybe 10 pounds for a week or so, then I might want to move up to 15 pounds each, okay? But that's going to be a struggle again, getting them up there, because I've got to strengthen those muscles, and then 20 and 30, whatever, as it goes up. Every time it's a strain. Every time it's an effort. And I'll tell you what, it's, I don't see people lifting weights with grins on their faces. <laughs> I don't see people jogging down the road with grins on their faces. Okay? They, boy, it doesn't look like fun to me. Okay? But... You know, we have to put the effort in, okay? We, we should want to be tested, want to be tried. So we can become more in his image. That's our goal. That's what we want to be, okay? And so we, we know that the testing of our faith, testing of our faith, I believe that I'm going to get stronger doing this. I also believe in doing that, there's going to get to be a limit where I can't go any further. I know that in this. Okay? But in life, I'm going to keep going. We can keep going. You can keep going. Knowing that the testing of your faith, conviction of the truth, Okay, do you have a conviction? Do I have a conviction? Okay, knowing that the testing of my faith produces. To produce something means something has to come out as a result. And it can produce one of two things. It can produce, I quit. Or it can produce, I'm going to go on. I'm going to keep going. Okay? But if you stop exercising, you're not getting any stronger. You're getting weaker. If we stop exercising the Word, we're not getting stronger in the Lord. We're weakening. Because the world is taking, you know, its influence on us at that point. We're not working to overcome that. Okay? Uh, you know, so I, I need to... Um, I need to do that. I need to work out. I need to do that which, or from which something results, okay? That doesn't mean that I'm going to go to a strip club to see if I can go in and to look the other way. Or that I can go in and I can, you know, witness to someone but not let anything else bother me because I don't think I could do that. That doesn't mean that someone who has a drinking problem should go into a bar witnessing to people. You don't put yourself in positions of failure, you put yourself in positions of success, and God does that. God puts you in a position of success, okay? But you want to render something fit for something else. I want to render myself fit for him. Knowing that I want to make sure I'm reading here. 
Okay, uh, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Produces endurance, to endure. Okay, how many people have had to endure something before? I'm sure most of us have. If not all of us, we've had to endure things at times. Okay, but um, you know, are we constant? Are we steadfast? Stead, fast. I'm not moving. I'm like a rock here. I'm trusting in the word. Am I constant? Okay. Am I patient? Ask somebody one time what the definition of patience was. Hi, this is Pastor Dan Kramer from Zion Christian Church in Pittsburgh. This program will give you a glimpse into the life of an amazing group of people who are seeing God do tremendous things. We trust that you're encouraged by our rich worship service and the ministry of God's Word. We'd love to have you visit with us here some Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We'd love to make you welcome, and I know the Holy Spirit would encourage you. We take time in His presence to enjoy Him. Love to have you do that with us here at Zion Christian Church.